following Pascha, and it is called anti-Pascha. Now, you might be confused in thinking that that means it's against Pascha, like the word means, but in this case, it's not really. What it means is second Pascha, or Pascha again, right? And we see this very evident in our Holy Scripture today, because the story of Thomas is told to us. Thomas, the one who was kept from being there. The fathers teach us that Thomas was not there because he was just late and, you know, didn't want to show up. But instead, the Lord ordained it that he couldn't be there on the first day. We don't know exactly what happened, but he could not be there on the first day when the Lord revealed himself, which would have been Pascha. So he didn't make the Pascha service. You know, he didn't make the service. But today, we kind of say it again, right? And the whole story is re retold again in the gospel simply because Jesus goes through the doors, right? It says that the doors were shut and he entered in, right? Fathers tell us that this is a, St. Gregory the Great says that this is a great symbol. It's a symbol of how the Lord came out of the virgin and the doors were shut. He mystically became God in a mystical way that we can't even understand. And these doors were shut again, and the Lord passed through them in an impossible way. How do you walk through a door? But the Lord was able to do it. He did it the first time to prove and show them that he was truly God, that he could walk through walls, that he did not have any limitations anymore. And yet, what does it say? He says, he walks in and he says, peace to you, and the disciples were glad when they saw them, and they wanted to touch him. And it says that they touched his side. They also were able to handle the Lord, as St. John, the apostle, says in his epistle. He says they touched him. They knew he was real, right? He wasn't just a spirit, because we would think, well, maybe he was a ghost, right? If he was able to walk through a wall. That's how our images of people who walk through walls, they're ghosts, right? But the Lord was not a ghost. Because after he came in, he was touched. He was held. He said, see, I'm real. Right? So now we have the story again because Thomas, and that's today, it's the, the anti-Pascha, the Pascha again. So it says, now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said, we've seen the Lord. And he says, of course, that famous line, I won't believe unless I put my hands into the print of his nails, put my finger into the print, uh, into his side, I won't believe unless I can do that. So this last week, that's what they were telling Thomas. Thomas, you gotta see him. You gotta, well, I'm not gonna believe. Not until I really see him in, in the flesh. And after eight days, the disciples were again inside, and Thomas this time was with them. And he says, Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said again, peace to you. Then he said directly to Thomas, reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. At that point, Thomas knew that Jesus wasn't just a man, that Jesus wasn't just a spirit, but that he was spirit and man, God himself. And he acknowledges this. Jesus said then to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not yet seen and have believed. And that would be us, wouldn't it? Right? He's talking about us. Because we haven't got to touch directly. We haven't seen directly, only through icons and through the body and blood of the Lord, which is also real. <laughs> and so we are really partaking of God. But to see him in the flesh, face to face, we have not done that yet. And that will be coming soon. So Jesus did many other signs, it says, in the presence of his disciples. He did a lot of other things, right? And those other things that he did were fantastic, and we hear about them in our Acts of the Apostles, right? Today's reading. They were lining, there were so many people that were lining them up in the streets and hoping that one of the apostles would walk by in just his shadow. 
would touch them and they would be healed. It repeats a couple of times that everyone was healed who was in their presence. So the miracles of Christ didn't just start or stop at Pentecost, or I mean, sorry, at Pascha, but they continued on even after uh, the Lord left us and ascended into heaven, which will happen in a few uh, days. But today, we look at Thomas. So one of the things that I want you to reflect upon is how it is very important for us to go back to the fundamentals of our faith. And Thomas here, his revelation, he's seeing God, he's touching his hands and touching his feet and touching his side. These are really connection points for Thomas. He made the connection that God is really truly who he is. We also have to make this in our lives. And daily we have to resurrect ourselves back to a belief in God, back to trusting him. And it's about going back to the fundamentals. We had a wonderful men's fellowship yesterday, and we had some really great discussion. And our discussion was a lot about those kind of things, explaining that we have to go back to the fundamentals of our faith all the time, right? We have to return back to them. You might think, well, I've been an Orthodox Christian for you know, 25, 30 years, or all my life, or whatever, maybe 10 years. You think, well, I, I know everything there is to know, and I've got it all down, or or maybe I know kind of what it's about, uh, but we kind of, if, if we let go our basic fundamentals, which of course for us as Orthodox Christians is daily prayer, right? Praying daily, reading scripture, reading Holy Scripture, reading the Psalms, reading the daily readings, and then having the presence to keep our minds focused on God throughout the day. This is our constant challenge, and these are the fundamentals of the faith. In addition to that, you should know the creed. You should understand the points of the creed. Know what each one means. If you don't know, when you say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, if you just stack that first phrase and say, I believe in one God, do you understand what that means? Hmm? So each part of the creed is a good way to go back and study that and look at that and examine that and say, what does that mean for me and for the church? And what is it that I believe? Because our beliefs are going to be challenged. The apostles' beliefs were challenged right away. Because as we see in the Acts of the Apostles, those who were opposed to them were those who did not believe in what? The resurrection. The Sadducees were a sect of uh, Jewish um, leaders who didn't believe in the resurrection. You see why this is placed in our text today, right? Because the verity of the resurrection, as Thomas witnessed himself, was why they went out and spread the gospel. That fact of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, his defeating of death, conquering of death, meant that the apostles could conquer death too, right? He says, right in the text, it says, I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to breathe on you the Holy Spirit, and you're going to have the power to forgive sins or not forgive sins. You're going to have the power to heal, to change people's lives through the power of God, the Holy Trinity, working together, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all at once empowering these apostles to do unbelievable things. So we have to go back to the fundamentals. I like basketball and always uh, played when I was younger. And you talk to the professional players who play like all the time. They'll tell you that you have to go back to the fundamentals, even as a professional, right? You think, well, these pro guys, they don't have to dribble anymore or they don't have to practice shooting. No, actually they practice more. And as an Orthodox Christian, you need practice. Because you can't do anything in life without practice, if you want to perfect it, if you want it to be finished and great. You have to work at it. And as an Orthodox Christian, it means going back to the fundamentals. Even as a Christian, I would say, if you've been here for all your life, you should go back. I know we read the Creed every Sunday, but go back to the Creed and just look at it again. And you're sitting in your easy chair, and when you can meditate on it and think about it, and I want you to meditate on what we really believe. 
Because every single thing in the creed is going to be challenged, brothers and sisters, in the end times. When the Lord is about to return, all of these little fundamentals that we kind of assume are going to become very important. So Antipasca, the second Pascha of Thomas, and today we also celebrate Isaiah, my, uh, God, my new uh, grandchild, grandchild's name day will be today. Okay, The holy prophet Isaiah, who foretold all these things. He told all of these things that were going to happen. Much of Jesus' crucifixion was foretold by Isaiah. Beautiful that his day falls on this day. Because Isaiah would be another place to go and turn to the fundamentals and read the fundamental prophet. But this, brothers and sisters, is and must be our call. If we want to be in the game we, and we don't want to sit on the bench, we have to know our fundamentals. We have to be accomplished at what we do. Challenge yourself. The only way you will become a better Orthodox Christian is if you push yourself. You challenge yourself. Praying more. Reading a little bit more. Taking time to talk to God not yourself. <laughs> we have this tendency to talk to ourselves, right? When we make a mistake or, why did I do that? Oh, I'm so stupid. But turn that to speaking and talking to God like he's with you, because he is. And let him minister to you through that conversation. Thomas desired to see God. God held him back so that he could show us this message of truth. That God has revealed himself to us. If we're willing to reach out, to touch him, to find him, to seek him, he will come to you. He will reveal himself to you. And he will give you the same life that Thomas had. And you can say, my Lord and my God. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Christ is risen.